Hello, this is Max Drake. I'd just like to demonstrate some of the things I'll be teaching in this course. Um, uh, Revit productivity, um, automating the tedious stuff. So here I'm using DSpace, which is my hotkey for dimension. Just come and click onto that there. If I just click on that text, I can just type CO space and I've got a note through there for checking dimensions on site. Another quick way of getting notes into here is just to type NN. I select a um, file with a whole load of um, text notes in them, select one and just put it in and there that's fully written now. I can actually just grab it, adjust it and go and use that again, NN and I'm just going to grab the same file, select a different note. So this will grab any note file that you want and put it through there and again bring it back through there. We will now go and touch that one and go A3. I get an arrow and it's to the right and it's set to the right top automatically. And if I do that there, A3 again, I can get my arrow and I prefer rectangular ones. So you can do a different one if you prefer the curly ones. I can walk into there and say, oh, I don't like my symbol there. Let's just take that symbol out of there and I'm just going to go DIA space and I've got that sort of symbol. I can come in here and I can say degree symbol. DEG, much easier to remember than whatever the ASCII code number for is it through there. I would use quite a bit of stuff. I would use rooms quite a bit to capture data from where by putting information about the spaces into the rooms and then pulling that out and putting it into an asset database. So I'll be jumping into the visibility graphics and turning it on and off. So if I just type R2, my hands are here and it's just automating itself. If I just type R2 again, it's all doing it nice and wonderfully. There's a little man at the back that's playing with a mouse. And the same with uh, another frustrating thing that I personally have. So these are personalized as to what I, I want to be, um, to, to, to these issues that I have, the tedious bits. Another one is room separators. I'll be printing out the set of drawings and I suddenly realize that the room separators in a couple of views are still there. So I can just type R1 for that and it comes through and does exactly the same through there. And if I type R1 again for that, it just toggles it on and off. Dead easy. I can also chain a lot of commands just to one particular uh, hotkey. So here I'm just going to type G for region. I come through and I, it's, if you look up here, it's preset to rectangle. So it isn't defaulting to line. I've got it preset to rectangle because it's generally how I do most of them. And I can do that straight away. Um, so that's a convenient way to do it. If we come through and we start looking at notes again, another thing that I like to do is I'm trying to use dynamic notes a bit more. So here's a demonstration of a dynamic note. So for this one, I'm going to use LP. So this is the duct size. So this could be a 300 by 200 or 300 diameter. I can just select whatever system that's in. So it's all set up and written in exactly the same way. And if I want to add insulation, yes or no in the note, I can just go yes, submit, said where do you want the text? And it then writes it on several lines for me like that. So I can select that note and go A3 again and just add the arrows through to there. So I'm not doing a lot of co copy and paste, copy and paste and going into edit. I can actually just type the note from scratch. So I can do the same with the piping and I can say what service. I prefer to think service then I think of the pipe diameter. So for this one, I could have had a pull down menu for, for this one. I've just got hall water, 25 diameter and it says at the top what the note is so you can clearly see what data you need to put into there do you want to add a note about four no i don't so i'm just going to put that into there and it writes that note through there i can then do that one again and go pp and we can actually say it's a sewer service and the pipe diameter is 100 and yes i do want a four and the four is going to be 1.5 decks and i can put an input through there i can select the location of there and then it does that so again, I've got the symbols coming through correctly. And if I just go um, A3, I can point to wherever that particular pipe would actually be positioned. And the same A3 if I want to um, identify where that is. So I don't have to keep on jumping up to the ribbon because that's not my work style. I prefer to keep um, uh, my mouse in the main screen. This is my personal way of doing things, but other people may have other methodologies and these processes can still speed a lot of those ones up. Another one, we can do this for an architectural one. So this one, I've got a 6-6 six, six key, so it explains which bits I've got to put some information in. So this one is uh, 12 millimeters jib. 
and the internal line we want paint finish and the framing size is 100 times 50 and uh, the insulation thickness is an R2.4 say and it has got a rep or say is there a rigid air barrier yes the rigid air barrier is 7.5 sorry 0.5 millimeters ply and it's got a ventilated cavity and what do I want to know about the ventilated cavity the batten center so we can say 600 and then I can just choose whatever my um, cladding is from uh, preset ones that I have and they could be 20 preset ones and it then goes through a lot of the notes uh, I can just chuck in straight away other bits I've just got to build on afterwards but uh, this process could be sped up a little bit um, and in the, the writing through there and then I do an A3 onto that like so I think no I want the bottom arrow at the bottom at this point in time so I just come down to there and set it at that point there so I can reuse that same note again on here so if I just type uh, 66 there and come through on this one, I'm going to have 10 millimeters ply uh, selected uh, with selected beach veneer. And then the finish is going to be polyurethane clear semi-gloss. And the framing size is going to be 125 times 50, and the insulation is going to be RC.0. And we're not going to have any ventilated cavities, and I'm just going to select another one through there and go OK. Same repetition comes all the way through, and uh, it's got all of that information. So the same uh, dynamic note I can use over and over again for um, a lot of different ones. So uh, a3 on that one there and we can do that so we will build in the course we will build the GUI so that you can develop and, and make choose what you want in the one in in, in the course uh, this particular one through here I build this but each of these has got a radio but button on them so if you only wanted to add the first two items in the note or you wanted to add the second two items or maybe three items through there the framing sites and the insulation and maybe the stud distance and things like that that you could actually just make this um, just doing the exterior cladding so if you wanted individual notes through there you could use the same uh, tool to actually do it so an easier way of doing it through, through there Towards the end of the course, what we do is uh, we look at, um, as a bonus part of it, is to look at the return on investment, where we can see how long it takes to do it manually, how long it takes to do it on an automation, and then we can just uh, see the time difference, and we can log how frequently we use certain keys. So we've got clearly defined and accurate data on, on, on how much efficiency we're getting from from changing over to doing this method so that's a clear way that you can show if you actually have a fixed fee for um, uh, producing documentations and you can show that you've reduced the time that you produce that documentation by using automation by three four five percent that that is increasing the company's profit and then you can say well because of what i can actually do through there can i have a little bit of that as well we also look at uh, ways of uh, when we build these things we start off doing them specifically so they they work for the individual and then we try and generalize them to so that um, uh, we can share them across the office we can also look at compiling it into a, a an executable so that it can be shared around with with everybody and uh, that way they can't fiddle with uh, the the codes that you've got uh, we're using a simple scripting language to do this and so uh, 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 there's not a high bar requirement for coming in and doing this course and a lot of the um, scripts and uh, that I've just demonstrated there will all be accessible and uh, available as part of the course so if you're not particularly good at scripting you can actually just take these uh, scripts and adapt them now if you think how those particular tools could be used to speed up your work and in some ways the, the objective of the course is to so that you can focus on the design not fight with the, the, the program itself so that your design flows with modifying the tools so that they work in with your workflow so you can end up being speedy speedier and a, a, a better designer you can put more thought into the design rather than uh, just trying to get the, the, the program to, to do what you need it to do 
So uh, if you found that interesting, please consider taking the course. Thank you.